Hey everyone, and welcome to Hollywood Studios. Today, we have a really important topic to discuss, and I know it might sound a little bit silly, but I promise this is going to be a really important one for you if you want to visit Walt Disney World with your family, especially if you have family who has mobility issues, and you're thinking about having that discussion with them about using a wheelchair or an ECB. Yes, we're talking about benches, seating, and the lack thereof here at Walt Disney World. And we're doing it here at Hollywood Studios today because this park has not gotten enough love so let's show it some love wander around see what we can see have a little bit of fun and talk about this really important topic now if you've been hanging out with me for the last week you know that we've been talking about so much including all of the things that are coming to the parks here in the future because of all the announcements that came out of D23. And there have been a lot of big announcements. We've been talking about these big announcements, but there have been very few related to Hollywood Studios. And so I want to make sure that we're not only not ignoring this park, but also that we're keeping an eye out here for anything that may have snuck its way into a shop or the park itself. You never know, there might be some cool things here that we just have missed. Careful! deciphering an artifact down here. The uh, 50 years of sorrow shall befall the destroyer of this uh, vessel. <laughs> oh no. But before we get too far into the park, let's talk a little bit about why we're having this main discussion. What's the deal with benches and why did this come to my attention in the first place? So we've actually talked about benches at Walt Disney World before, but it was a long time ago. So we're due to have this conversation again anyway. But in the past week, as I've been making my way around the parks, I've noticed that there have been like clusters of benches removed from some of the theme parks. Now the first time I noticed this was over at Magic Kingdom over in the New Fantasyland area, kind of by Ariel's Grotto. There used to be a number of benches there. They're beautiful. Over along the rock wall, like across from Ariel's Grotto. But when we visited, there was only one. And I thought that that was like interesting, but since there was still a bench over there, I thought, you know, maybe they're just updating them. And the bench that was over there was in really, really rough shape. So I think that's important to mention too. But then fast forward to, I think it was the day before yesterday when we were at Epcot. I'm walking my way back to the front of the park and I see that all of the benches that are kind of under the monorail track, like they're in the shade. I love sitting over there. They're all gone. And I took a quick video of it. I posted it here as a short. I posted it elsewhere as well. And I said like, Disney, what's the deal with the benches being removed? Because we see this happen all the time. It's not just one and it's not just for a short time. They'll remove an entire section of benches, sometimes for months, sometimes forever. And this becomes a problem for a whole list of reasons. I mean, the first and probably most obvious is that benches are a pretty important component component of any space like this. Sure, they're a place for people to sit down and relax for a little bit, but it's also an accessibility issue, which in my opinion is one of the most important parts of this discussion. Like I said, we'll get back to that. Now, of course, there are benches here at Walt Disney World. There are places to sit, but that's not the concern. The concern is that they continue to remove those places to sit. This is actually one example. There used to be a bench right here, and now it's gone. Now, has it been relocated? I don't know, maybe. Will it be back? Maybe. But the question is, what are guests supposed to do until that happens? Or if it doesn't happen at all? Both things that we've seen multiple times in the past couple years. I mean, it's against the rules to bring in your own seat and can and will be confiscated by security when you enter the park. So what options are available to you, especially because your options in park continue to dwindle? It's a good question. And it's one that I've been asking for quite some time now. By the way, before we continue on, I did want to point out that the stage one company store continues to be closed as does this shop right here. I can't imagine that we can expect to see either of these shops coming back. We do see stage one company store open up for like special event merchandise, mainly May the 4th. I don't know. I miss it though. We need more Muppet stuff in the parks. Now again, yes, I am repeating myself, but I do want to be fair here. There are definitely benches in some locations. This is one of them right outside of Mama Melrose, which is where you would be sitting to wait for your dining reservation. There's another one right here, but therein lies the problem is these benches are in these places where you'd be sitting to wait for your reservation, but what about everywhere else in the park? And even in these areas, it's still limited seating. Take another look at this side of the Stage One Company store. Isn't it cool? So whimsical. And I do want to take a second and point out that there are benches along this stretch as well. I don't want to be misleading, you know, and tell you that there are absolutely no benches. That's not what I'm trying to say. 
just that there aren't enough, by the way. It's a little bit rough here in Grand Avenue. Miss Piggy's Fountain is under construction. And there's something going on over here. I'm not entirely sure what they're building, but we'll just have to wait and find out. We've made our way off planet and it looks like Rise of the Resistance is down, but that's not the only attraction that's down this morning. Rock and Roller Coaster and Tower of Terror are also down this morning. So it's kind of a rough day here at Hollywood Studios. And you know, one thing to keep in mind too, especially as you wander around the park with me today, is that it's really early. It's not even the busiest time of day and it's not even the busiest time of year. So that also plays a role too in how effective the number of benches that are here actually are. I see a crowd over here though. Hmm. You guys do know what is this water. about? Is it the Mandalorian? Ah, the Mandalorian is here. I haven't had the pleasure of meeting him just yet, but I guess we could say that for another day. We've got things to do, stuff to see, topics to discuss. Now, I think it's important to mention that not all benches here at Walt Disney World are actual benches. Sometimes they are themed to look like crates, for example, which might work for some people, but they're not gonna work for everybody. And so that's definitely something to be aware of if you are coming here to Walt Disney World. Not all benches are benches. So this brings me to my next point. What are you supposed to do if you want to visit Walt Disney World with your family, especially if someone has mobility issues or maybe even if they just have a little bit of a hard time getting around, you know, if they need to take a seat every now and again. What do you do to ensure that you can have a great trip? Well, the first thing we have to do is have really honest conversations about what your capabilities are, your family's capabilities are, and what the situation is here in Walt Disney World. And I wanna to talk to you about how to do just that and have that conversation, which I myself have had, and it's a little bit typical, but I see cookies. I've never had one of those cookies. Let's go get one. All right, let's take a look at this cookie. I've heard good things about this. Oh my goodness. It is huge. I mean, I know I carried it over here, but it, it didn't hit me until I just kind of looked at it. I mean, look at this thing. It's a warm chocolate chip cookie that's crunchy and gooey. I've never had one of these before. I've heard people say that they're really good, but take a bite and then we'll continue our conversation. Hmm. That's delicious. Now, conversations about things like this are always difficult, especially because there are a lot of people out there who don't like to admit that they need a little bit of extra help to get around. And that's totally understandable, especially if they don't need extra help to get around during day-to-day -day life. It can seem silly and almost a little bit excessive to have conversations about how you're gonna get around and how you're gonna function on a Disney vacation, because it's not that big of a deal, right? But the truth of the matter is that it's probably a bigger deal than you realize. I mean, don't forget, Walt Disney World is a huge place. It's the size of San Francisco, if you take the whole entire resort into consideration. And there's a lot of walking that you're gonna be doing back and forth to your resort, you're staying off property back and forth to your car, and it's not uncommon to rack up like 20 miles a day when you're at Walt Disney World. It happens all the time. And so the question becomes, can you walk 20 miles? Is that something that you and your family members are realistically capable of and capable of doing without having a place to rest? Not to mention, what if your only option is to kind of lean up against the edge of a planter or do like I'm doing right now and sit on the ground? Not gonna be an option for everyone and I think that's important to know going in because very often it's the option that's going to be available to you. Now just because you struggle with sitting on the ground or sitting on a curb or you need seating that is in the form of a bench, you know, a standard seat versus sitting somewhere like this, doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with you. It doesn't mean that you are a burden. It just means that you're a normal person who has things that you need. In fact, I've been there too at different points in my life where I wouldn't have been able to sit on the ground. I would have needed a bench. I would have needed a proper seat. And that's true for so many people, not just you, whoever you are, if you're watching this. So now, having a better understanding of how much walking you're gonna do and the bench situation, we have to ask ourselves a question. What's going to be the best way to prevent as much stress as possible while here at Walt Disney World? 
more often than not, the answer to that question is bringing yourself a mobility device. And I, quite frankly, recommend getting yourself an ECV. ECVs are great. They're a great way to get around. They're not a standard wheelchair, so you don't need to have someone push you, and that means that the person who would be pushing you is going to have a better overall experience. And it's going to guarantee you a seat no matter where you are at Walt Disney World, no matter when you need it. And look, I can hear some of you already. You're grumbling, you're sighing, you're unhappy with me saying this because you don't want to have to rely on a tool. But, and again, we're having an open, honest conversation here. Do you feel like it would be easier for you to enjoy your time and easier for your family to enjoy your time if they didn't have to worry about you? And if you didn't have to worry about you? That's a tough question. It's a really tough question to come to terms with, but I think it's a really important one to ask yourself. I want you to think about that while we look at this really cool police telegraph box right here. You know, I just learned about these the other day from a different channel. Someone goes around and talks about various like nerd facts. And um, I guess this is how police would communicate with each other before telephones. And if you were a really fancy citizen, you might have your own key so that you could actually call the police from one of these. Basically, you pop the key in, it essentially calls the police station, and then a police officer would come to the box so you could get your key back. Like, calling 911 before 911. It's pretty cool. Now, like I said, I know, I know it's a difficult conversation to have. I know that no one wants to talk about needing some type of assistance when they get to Walt Disney World, but it can be a lifesaver, and it can really really impact your Disney vacation in a positive way. So even if you're sitting here chatting with me today and you're thinking to yourself, man, I don't know if I want to commit to that. You know, like it's a lot to take into consideration and I'm not sure if I'm ready for that. I do think that it's important to at least think about it and think of it as an option that is available to you because it's definitely an option that's available to you. And this is, by the way, not only if you have some sort of chronic illness or disability, but if you're someone who is injured or if you're someone who just needs a little bit of help getting around. So with all of that having been said, let's take a second to talk a little bit about what your options are when it comes to renting an ECV or a wheelchair, because the same applies in that case as well. You have two separate options if you don't currently own an ECV or wheelchair and you're planning on using one when you visit Walt Disney World. The first is to rent from Walt Disney World at the theme park that you're going to be visiting. This is gonna be an option that's ideal for those of you who are going to the parks just for one day, you're getting there early in the day, and you wanna kinda of ease your family member into using an ECV because maybe they're being incredibly stubborn and they don't necessarily want one for their whole trip. Totally understandable, again, I've been there. This can be a great option, but there are a few things that you need to know. Number one, it can be a little bit more expensive, especially when we're talking about ECVs, than if you rent from a third party. We'll get to that here in a second. You also won't have the ability to take it out of the park with you. So you'll only have access to that ECV while you're in the park, which is great and is going to work well for a lot of people. But if you're someone who really wants to have access to an ECV or a place to sit getting to and from your resort, you might want to consider going our second route. And that is renting from a third party. Now renting an ECV or wheelchair or any mobility device from a third party is a great option. First of all, you have a wide range of mobility devices to choose from, so you're not just stuck with the wheelchair or ECV that's available at Walt Disney World, which are great. They're a fantastic option, but there's no getting around the fact that it's very limited. Renting from a third party definitely gives you a number of other options to choose from, and that can be really helpful. Renting from a third party also tends to be a bit more affordable, and that's great because it also allows you to rent for the duration of your vacation, which is fantastic because it gives you the opportunity to have this ECV, wheelchair, or mobility device no matter where you are on Walt Disney World property or off. So if you're going to be doing something like park hopping, you don't have to worry too much about whether or not there's going to be another wheelchair available for you later in the day when you get to your next park. You'll have one available because you'll have brought it with you. It's also great for those who really want a leisurely trip here at Walt Disney World. Maybe you want to do a little bit of walking. For example, we're here at Hollywood Studios today and there's a walking path that goes all the way to Epcot. 
while you don't need to walk, you can take the boat or the Skyliner, the walk can be kind of nice. And so if you and your family want to do that, but one family member struggles a little bit with getting around and being on their feet for that long, having that mobility device with you that you've rented from a third party gives you the option to do that with ease. You can just scoot on over to your next destination without having to worry about benches, without having to worry about anything really. And of course, it's important to keep in mind that you don't need to be stuck in that mobility device the entire time. I know that what I'm talking about right now might sound very much like I'm saying you just have to sit down and just scoot the whole time. Absolutely not. You can definitely park that mobility device somewhere. In some cases you might have to if you're going to certain restaurants and stuff. You can also swap out with other family members. I know that we do that. If someone in my party who needs a mobility device really just wants to walk for a little bit because they want to stretch their legs, I'll jump on there, Russell jump on there, and then when they need to sit down, they need to use the ECV again, we just swap out. It's as simple as that. Now, of course, I want to talk about this in greater detail with you. I want to sit down in a much more controlled setting than the theme parks and give you more information on using an ECV, renting an ECV, and we're going to go over all of that in a future video. So I encourage you to go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that like button as well that lets us know that you enjoyed what it is that we did here today. And of course, continue this conversation by adding your questions, comments, concerns, and anything else you'd like to add to this conversation in the comments section. Conversations like this are so very important because I feel like they give us an opportunity to clarify things that might be difficult to talk about with family members because yes, it can sometimes be difficult to talk about these topics with family members. So I wanna give you the information that I think you want and need. I wanna show you what hopefully you need to see. And then all of us, not only me and you, but also your family members as well, can talk more about this in a way that helps you arrive at a better vacation. More magic, less stress, that's our goal. But I think that's all for now. I know that this was just a quick trip to Hollywood Studios today. I really, really looked around to see if there was something else going on, but I really couldn't find anything. Lots of down attractions today, so that also kind of contributed to things being a little bit more crowded than I think they had to be because no one was waiting in lines. But other than that, it was a pretty nice morning here. I hope you had fun and I hope that this helped you understand a little bit better what the situation is. I do want to go back over to Epcot and check on those benches. I do want to go back over to Magic Kingdom and check on those benches as well, see what the situation is. But this is just another reason that it's so important to understand what it can be like here at Walt Disney World versus imagining in your mind what it was like, you know, 10, 15 years ago. But that's all for now. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye.